Okay, worksheet number eight. Let's take a look. Here's some key information about exponential and logarithmic graphs. This information you should have memorized that will make uh, working with these functions a lot easier. I will mention that the domain and range of the exponential function and the domain and range of the logarithmic function are reversed because they are inverse functions of each other. Whenever you have an inverse function, the domain and range interchange. Um, the exponential function has a asymptote of y equals 0. That is along the x-axis, meaning it will never cross that value. And since they flip for the logarithmic function, it's along x equals 0, meaning it approaches it, but never actually equals or crosses it. So let's apply this to some questions. Suppose f of x equals 3 to the x. Sketch the graph of x. Find the domain and range, any intercepts, and any asymptotes. Well, this is pretty much exactly the same as any general exponential function. It'll have the exact same domain and range. I could plug in any number for x. The only time I get restrictions in my domain is if I'm taking square roots, or if I have fractions. In this function, I have neither, so I'll have no restrictions. And then my range. Uh, it will be exactly the same as its parent function from 0 to infinity. You could also look at this rationally and think, well, for any number I plug in for x, it's just going to be some multiple of factors of 3. Since 3 is always positive, any multiple of factors of 3 will always be positive numbers. That's why it's got to be greater than or equal to 0, only positive numbers. So if I was to sketch this function, I might also consider what any intercepts it has. So if I want any since the range is from 0 to infinity, I'm never going to cross my x-axis, so I'll have no x-intercept. And if I want a y-intercept, all I have to do, considering the y-axis, every value of x along this y-axis is 0, so i just got to plug in 0 for x. So f of 0 would be 3 to the 0, which is 1. So it's going to go through this graph at 1. Now, the scale of these axes is kind of off, so I'm going to do every other one is 1, so 1, 2, 3, so my graph is an S squished, 5, negative 1, negative 2, and so on. So I know 0, 1 is a point on my graph. It has an asymptote along the x-axis, so it's going to come from close values to the x-axis to 1, and then go off to infinity. There's a sketch of my first graph. Moving on to the second one. It's going to be the same as this graph, except it will shift right three units and up two. So if I'm shifting up two units, that's going to affect my range. So I'll go from two to infinity. All my values will be two more. And if I'm shifting uh, right three units in my domain, well, all values of x shift to right is still all values of x. Uh, again, I have an asymptote. Now, note, since my range has shifted up two units, so will my asymptote. So it's going to be, this is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5. My asymptote will be all along y equals 2. That's my asymptote. And when I sketch the graph, or if I find my intercept, y-intercept, that would be 0 for x. And plugging that in, I get 3 to the negative 2 plus 2, which is 2 and 1 ninth. That's my y-intercept. So 2 and 1 ninth is just above 2 here. So my graph looks something like that. My domain for my parent function, log of x, was between 0 and infinity, and my range was negative infinity to infinity. Well, my domain here, I'm shifting left one unit, which means my domain for this function will be shifted left one unit. So it will be from, sorry, right one unit, 1 to infinity, and its range is shifting up three units. Well, same range. If I shift all real numbers, it will still be all real numbers. So here's my domain and range for this function. And then 
I'm going to find my x intercept. Remember, x intercepts occur when y equals 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 for the function value. So 0 equals log base 2 of x minus 1 plus 3. Well, that would be when negative 3 equals log base 2 of x minus 1. So to find the x value, it's inside of this log function, I'm going to do the inverse operation of taking the log, which is to exponentiate. So I'm going to have 2 raised to both sides. So 2 to the negative 3 power would equal 2 to the log base 2. These are inverse operations, cancel each other out, leaving with x minus 1. So then when I solve for x, I'm going to get 1 plus 1 eighth, which is 9 eighths, be my x intercept. My x intercept is at 9 eighths of 0, which is a little bit less than 1. So if I do 1, so a little more than 1, 2, 3, 4, 9 eighths would be a little bit right here. So I also need to consider my asymptotes. So my asymptotes um, it was originally at x equals 0, and I've shifted over one direction. I can see from my domain that my asymptote is going to be at x equals 1. So here's my asymptote. And now I'm going to sketch my function. It gets really, really it approaches my um, asymptote really, really close, and then comes up and goes off on top. That is it.